This is a racing simulator that John put together with off-the-shelf electrical conduit, and this is a miniature version of that same racing simulator, and today I'm going to be using the iPad and these miniature connectors and coffee stirs to show you exactly how to put this frame together. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to break down all the different things and techniques that he used in this build. We'll just jump right into it. So first of all, this is the finished racing simulator. He also shared uh, some other photos. He's got the the, um, the model that he made in a 3D modeling software, which if you have the skill set and ability to do that, and that's awesome. But if you don't, then you can use these stirs, which I'll talk more about here in a minute. Uh, but here is his modeled version, which is really awesome. And I think he sent this to me a while back and was asking me for different techniques and things because we built a racing simulator on the channel a while back. So it was really cool that that inspired him to put this together. And so we can kind of go through all the photos here. And I think towards the very end, we can see kind of the start of the frame here and we'll just start by breaking down this and then I'll just uh, kind of show you the miniature model along the way and highlight some of the different techniques and things as we go through it. So first of all, it looks like he's got these two horizontal pieces that are on the ground and if I had to guess, this is probably a 10 foot piece that he left just all one continuous piece because uh, you can get 10 foot sticks of EMT conduit off the shelf, places like Lowe's, Home Depot and Ace Hardware, different hard hardware and home improvement stores and you can get it in 10 foot sticks and I would imagine that's what he did. And we can also see in the background that he used the handheld pipe and tube bender which is uh, really crucial to this build and uh, we can see where he bent um, the corners here which we'll go over as we look at the frame. But essentially he's got two 10 foot sticks um, that are going all the way the length and then bent up and he started with a 90 degree bend and uh, the, the pieces of conduit are going straight up now and this looks like three quarter inch EMT conduit. And we'll just kind of start here with this cross piece in the first set of connectors. So this is the Maker Pipe T connector. It's designed, um, you know, it's two pieces that clamp around the pieces of conduit. And you can use those in a lot of different ways. They're a really versatile connector. Most commonly, they're used to just add crossbars like this. And there is no welding involved when you use Maker Pipe connectors and EMT conduit. You can just clamp the pieces of conduit together. And because of that, the or how that works is the piece of conduit just terminates in the bottom of the connector, goes across and terminates in the other side and then the top half of the t-connector uh, allows a through pipe to go continuously through it so this is the first part of the frame and i'm going to take apart some of the model here so we can kind of look at this and recreate this here and so essentially what he's done is kind of taken this is the main frame here so if we look We've got these two long horizontal spans that he bent on the very ends going straight up, you know, with the 90s that we saw there. And he's got that on each end. Now, something cool that if you may not know, uh, well, first of all, let me just say, these are the Maker Pipe Minis, and these are just made to replicate uh, the full-size Maker Pipe steel connectors so that you can model your builds on a small scale and figure out, you know, what... Um, you can figure out what connectors you need and kind of the overall plan that way. So this is the Maker Pipe T connector that we just looked at on the finished build. This is the miniature version of that. Uh, something cool that if you're modeling and you want to incorporate bins in your mini model, you can actually get some bendable metal wire and just put that inside of the coffee stir, which is what the Maker Pipe minis are designed for and what they come with if you buy them from us. You can also 3D print them if you have a 3D printer. But you can put some bendable wire in the coffee stir and you can add bins to your builds, which is pretty cool and allows you to kind of bend and incorporate and kind of plan what your build is going to look like if you want bins to be in your final build. So that's what I've done here to kind of bend the ends of this here. And then essentially this is the first crossbar that he added with the two T connectors and the bar going between them. And then we'll go back to the iPad now and look at the rest of the photos and we'll kind of start seeing the other way that he's put these together. So here we can see more of it in place. And what he's done at the very front is he's added another bar uh, that's bent going up to the top of the frame. And he used the maker pipe coupling here, which we don't actually have a mini version of. I'll show you that here in a second. But essentially, he used the maker pipe coupling, which joins two pieces of conduit together. And this was a really good idea because this is kind of a complicated bend and uh, a long span that's going to be longer than 10 foot. But essentially, that sled that we looked at from the beginning, this horizontal piece, he's basically just added a maker pipe coupling in between that piece and then this piece that comes out of the coupling and then is bent several times in different places. we got one here and one here that he used the handheld bender for. And then he used some more of the maker pipe T connectors to attach a, a vertical bar 
that holds this in place up here. So he's got it connected and reinforced with the coupling and then connected to the frame here. So if we look at that here with the mini model, and I don't actually have, uh, I don't have a coupling yet for the minis. We're gonna make those for you guys. And essentially this is the T connector here that he added to this and added the, the, the bar, the new bent bar, which I've got here. And then of course my uh, stir fell off of the bend here because I cut it too short. But essentially this is the bar that he bent a couple of times, connected it here to the front of the sled with a coupling, and then it goes through this T connector here. As we can see, if I can get it in there, there we go. And then essentially it just kind of goes to the front here and is attached to the front of the build. And actually, I think I put this in the wrong T-connector. I did. So there's the T-connector there, and it just goes up, and then you've got the bent piece of conduit. And I, like I said, I cut that too short, so it's falling apart. But <laughs> essentially, this is the bend that he did, uh, or the two more bends that he did, to kind of attach this to the front of the frame, and then this goes up to the front there. And that's what we just basically looked at um, just now with that frame and what he just added. And so let me do that again on the other side and then the other T connector. And like I said, we don't have a coupling yet, so I can't really reinforce this on the front and hold it on. So it's a little loose, but we're gonna work on adding those to the mini kits. But right now that's what we got. So that's the piece that we just looked at with the iPad. So we'll go back over there and look at that. And that's essentially what we've got with our mini build so far. And we'll look at the seat frame here in a moment, but we'll go through and keep looking at these pictures. Oh, actually here's the seat frame. Okay, so to do the seat frame, he essentially used four of the maker pipe T connectors and that we've looked at it several times now. And those just grab onto that main horizontal sled that run from the front to the back. T connectors grab on, he's got a very short stub in between those T connectors and then he's using 90 degree connectors on top there. And I'm not sure exactly why you use the 90 degree connectors. I would recommend just using two more T's. It's cheaper first of all. And then it's also just, um, kind of what you're supposed to use in this scenario if you're making an elbow. Um, most people don't realize that because of the way the T-connector is designed and the pictures we have on the website. But you can actually use the T-connector as an elbow. You just have the, the piece that runs continuously to the top half. Just have the piece of conduit flush with that, if that makes sense. So I would use two more T-connectors there. And then he's got the crossbars going across and actually supporting the seat there. So if we go back and look at our mini model, it's exactly what I've got in place here. And I just went ahead and modeled it exactly how he had it. But again, I would replace these with T connectors. But essentially, it's just the uh, it's just the, um, the the T connectors grabbing onto the horizontal sled, and then those go up, have a short stub in them, and then you've got the 90 degree connectors. Or again, I'd use T's, and then you just send those cross pipes across, and this is what the seat will rest on. And then you can you can attach your seat to those crossbars depending on the seat that you get. It looks like his came with a bracket. Uh, I'm not entirely sure exactly how he did it, but I can see some kind of bracket or something grabbing onto there. Uh, if you have a seat or something that you can link in the comments, uh, whoever's watching, not not John, but whoever's watching, if you're trying to make one of these and you need help mounting your seat, just post a link to it in the comments and I'll share some ideas on how you can do that. But essentially, that's how he put together the seat frame. So that's pretty easy. And then if we go back, we can look at these other pictures here. And here it looks like he added another crossbar with two more T connectors, which I've got on the model here already. Just the exact same thing as this front one, just going across and uh, it's just two of those there. And I think he was planning to support the pedals with that, as we can see uh, in the mini or in the pictures here, but it looks like he's just got a piece of plywood that the pedals are attached to. And then the cables and things are mounted and kind of routed on the cables uh, as we'll see later on. But essentially he's just added that bar going across and then we can also see here that he attached the large um, poles going up to the top. And this is actually what is supporting the monitor. So we can see here that he's got the T connectors grabbing on to the horizontal bars on the bottom. And it's the same thing on the other side. You can't really see that. So I'm not going to not going and can't really see those. So I'm not really going to mark up just to make it confusing. Um, I don't want to make it confusing, rather. But essentially, he's got the vertical bar on each side going up, and then he's got some T-connectors branched off of here. We can see this T-connector is grabbing on and sending a bar to the other side there, and then it's mirrored on the other side, of course. And he's also got T-connectors here grabbing on and supporting the monitors underneath. So he's got these, these little crossbars holding up the monitor. It looks like a pretty heavy monitor. And the way he actually attached the monitor, we have a video that I'll link in the description of how you can attach monitors like this. Um, 
which is what he did, and I guess it wasn't strong enough to keep it from rotating around. What I would do in that situation is instead of attaching it to a horizontal bar, flip the orientation of the T-connector and kind of build it into your design so the T-connector can be up straight up and down. It's a lot stronger that way because otherwise the way it is right now, as he experienced, it just slowly will rotate on that with the weight of the monitor on there. So you don't want that to happen, of course. So if you can figure out how to incorporate it into your design for that to be vertical, then I think that that, that would keep that from spinning around. But I guess he ran into that issue and just decided to add these crossbars here, or not crossbars, with these little poles sticking off, and this is what's supporting the monitor. So that's how he did that. And then we can see here that he added some plywood going across um, to support the steering wheel, which is cool, a good way to do that. Whenever I built mine a while back, I tried to build everything and attach it to the pipes, and I drilled into the pipes to do that, which worked just fine. Uh, that is an option, but it's a lot easier if you do what he did in these scenarios where you just add the plywood and then secure the pedals and things to that. That's pretty much the gist of the frame, and I'll go back to the mini model and kind of show you this. So essentially, it's just the two T connectors here uh, attached to the horizontal bars, and then he's got these long or vertical pipes going up, and he's got the T connectors that are supporting the monitor here, and then the T connectors that are adding this crossbar, and then this T connector, which the monitor mount is attached to, and then all of that just goes inside of these T connectors that he's got on the horizontal bars on the bottom of the sled, I'm calling it as we can see there. And then that is our finished simulator frame. And we can go back and look at the photo and we can see the finished frame here as well. So pretty cool, really awesome job and really love seeing racing simulators. And like I said, it was cool that he you know got this idea from the video that we did a while back. So here we can see another angle of it looks great. I think he said he added this uh, bar recently for the laptop stand, which is cool. He's got the monitor, or sorry, the gaming laptop there. Uh, that I imagine runs the iRacing and other uh, games that he plays. So that's really awesome, and it just looks really cool. So thanks so much, John, for sharing this. Like I said, if you're building one of these and you have some questions or you need help with mounting different things, whatever it might be, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'm happy to help, or you can give us a call. Just check out makerpipe.com, and then our phone number is there. You can call and ask for me. My name is Jake. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.